Hey, everybody, what's up? You're watching Sit Down on DJ Sixsmith. Katie Azelton here with us. Silk Road, her brand new movie. Katie, nice to meet you. How are you? I am well, thanks. It's nice to meet you. So the Silk Road is a pretty fascinating idea in and of itself to make a movie about it. Must have been pretty cool. So what was it like to do this? Uh, it was really cool, particularly because the director, uh, Tiller Russell, comes from documentaries. So it was a really, I think, interesting weaving of fact and fiction and insanely like well-researched um, storytelling, but then, you know, beautifully sort of elaborated upon. I mean, for somebody like you who's done some directing in the past, I feel like you have to appreciate that even more. So what were some little things that stood out just about what you're saying there, how he kind of put that all together? Um, I would really say the the sort of building of Jason Clark's character, which is sort of a combination of people, um, I thought was really interesting while still really holding on to like the actual facts of the story and how it all broke. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty interesting because when it comes to this story, it's like whether you're on the side of law enforcement or the other side of things, like people are kind of bending the rules in and of itself. Yeah, so no one what is that? It right. Yeah. Everybody's just doing their own thing. They're going solo. So what does that say just in terms of people in general and just our, our larger society? Like we look at these people and we're like, oh, they're good, but actually they're breaking the rules. You know, what are some thoughts you had there? I mean, look, I think these are incredibly human characters, right? It's like no one intends to be the bad guy. Rick Bowden wasn't intending, like he was doing his best to be on the right side of things. Um, and everyone, I think, not that they had the best of intentions, but they cer certainly weren't intending to be the bad guy in this story. Is and that I think that's of sort of true for a lot of people, not to sound like anyone saying there's good guys on both sides, because there's not. There's a <laughs> lot of bad guys, I think, on both sides. It's the truth. Yeah, I'm glad we're uh, we're making that distinction there. There are all bad people. There are not second, good people. Really, on <laughs> viral in like 20 seconds, but I'm just saying. <laughs> There, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of bad guys. And it's, I think it's really interesting that it's a story of essentially two bad guys. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to look at that concept and also just to look at movies too in 2021. Obviously things have transformed so much. So when you think about the stuff that you're doing now, what's most important to you? Is it the script, the people you're working with? Like, what do you really want to focus on? Now in 2021, it's, um, it's both. I really want to do a lot of like more feel good stuff. I feel like we just sort of need like a salve for the soul after what we've all been through collectively. Um, and that goes for the script and it goes with for who I want to work with. I want to work um, with people who who are all in it to to tell a great story and um, and it's, it, I know that sounds so obvious and you'd think that's why what everyone does because we're all so insanely lucky to do what we do and to work in the business that we're working in, um, but it's not always the case. And, um, and I think now after everyone has taken such a long pause, I think it's really interesting to, I, to see how people are going back and what they're choosing to go back to do. Um, I think everyone is definitely thinking a lot more about how they wanna move forward in the world. And I think that's great. I think it's been a good time just to reflect on everything in our world and also what we do with our careers too. It's like, we can do these interviews through Zoom. Like we don't have to do these whole junkets where we're going to different cities and things like that. Like a better way to do things. And also just like the stuff you want to do at this point too, because it takes a lot to get out of the house and go through COVID protocols and even all that yeah. stuff going forward. Like that's super important now in our world. And I also just think people have, um, maybe not everyone, but I myself personally, like, I think that beat really gave me the opportunity to stop and appreciate. I've got two small kids, medium sized kids at this point. And I think getting to spend that time with them and press the pause button was amazing. And I don't necessarily want to go back into fast forward. So I think being able to like stop and say, well, let's just sort of not say yes to everything as tempting as that is. Were there any big things with your kids that have really stood out during this time or was it just like the little things along the way? Yeah, I mean, look, we've, we've spent every day and night together. <laughs> so it's like, you know, at the beginning of all of this, I think we were start, it was all very cute, right? It was like, we do theme night dinners and dress up and do this whole thing. Now that's like 
seriously exhausting, but like what we have gotten into is for your network. This is very, a very good plug, but we have, we dove deep, dibbing, diving deep, we dove <laughs> deep into Survivor, oh, which go. is awesome. So I have an eight year old and a 13 year old. And it's like, we have done serious Survivor marathons. Um, and if you guys could send over some buffs, I would greatly appreciate that. We'll have to hook you up with that. How many seasons have you and the rest of the family covered at this point? We've jumped all over, but we're at, like, I would say we've probably done eight complete seasons. Oh. Now, like, my kids are getting very particular. Like, they know by episode two if they're going to stay in or not. Like, some <laughs> seasons are better than others. And right now we're doing the one that's um, Gen X versus Millennials. It's a great season. <laughs> great season now do your kids think they could do the, the survivor thing like have you had that conversation be like yeah mom i could totally be on the show yeah yeah no we talk about it regularly we've also <laughs> decided that mark my husband would not be great for survivor but not, i yeah. am very well suited for survivor mm -hmm. i'm in yeah because it's it's not only a physical thing but it's the whole emotional game you're playing with people and whether you're telling the truth or not like that's that's the deeper cut that you really yeah. when I feel Mark like you bring that realize, to the table. like no that's like called junior high for me <laughs> <laughs> You're built for this you're ready It's like I'm you're sorry I am a woman in Hollywood I fully understand <laughs> how this works <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we definitely need some feel good stuff. Like, I mean, have people been finding the league during quarantine? Has that been yes. kind of something that's popped up recently? Yeah, the league has been a big one. Um, Fun Mom Dinner was like a movie that I did that's on Netflix. And that's one that people have been like, that made me so happy. <laughs> yeah, we, we just, need, just that, we need that comfort food at this point. Yeah, yeah, I'm super into it. I love, let's really bring back the rom-com. Hey, why not? And what are some of your favorite rom-coms, by the way? What's up there for you? Oh, boy. Well, When Harry Met Sally, yep, obviously, classic. number one. Um, really, anything Penny Marshall, Nora Ephron, like mid, late 80s, Rob Reiner, early 90s, Rob Reiner, I'll go in there. Um, give me Tom Hanks any day of the week. Like, Tom Hanks is a solve for the soul. <laughs> Tom Hanks is what everyone needs right now. Yeah, he's just he's just gonna hit you right in the soul. I mean, when he got COVID at the beginning of everything, we're like, no, nah, you can't you can't take Tom Hanks from us. Stuff got real when Tom Hanks got yeah. COVID. Like everything, everyone was finally like, okay, all right. <laughs> well, you like, guys, this is now. Let's shut down the sets. Tom Hanks has it. We can't yeah. do anything anymore. That was exactly what it was. Like he really um, took one for the team. Yeah, yeah, he. It's crazy how long this is gone and everything else. It was like the real life Sully of COVID. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good way to uh, side <laughs> yeah. in with his career, that's for sure. When you think about your career, what have been some of the keys to your success? Because you've, you've been in TV shows and movies and directed and like we talked about, it's just not an easy industry to be in. So how have you persevered all these years? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> I don't know if I have an answer. I think, um, look, every time I feel like I try and conform and do what I'm supposed to do um, the way I'm supposed to do it, it never seems to work, right? Like I am not the conventional leading lady. I'm not Reese Witherspoon, God bless her. She's Reese Witherspoon. Like no one else is gonna be that, right? I'm not Kaylee Cuoco. Kaylee Cuoco is Kaylee Cuoco. And every time I've tried to be Kaylee Cuoco, it doesn't work. Um, so I think, the more I stay true to myself, like the league is a great example um, in that I think I, I ended up landing that role by having dinner with the creators of the show and drinking too many margaritas <laughs> <laughs> and really showing my true self. And the more I think I can remember to do that, um, the better. So I'm just going to drink more tequila um, and go into meetings that way. But no, I think the more authentic you can be to yourself and um, whether it's in front of the camera or behind the camera, um, I think that if there is a key, I don't know if there's a key, I think a lot of this is a lottery, um, but if there is a key or a secret, I would say just be as authentic as you absolutely can. I think that's a great point. And I think also it comes down to the roles that are being written. And even when you think about Jenny, like there was a freedom to explore those different pockets of who she was as a person 
And I'm sure that lined up with you a little bit. So what was it like just being able to have that runway to be like, I can be whoever I want to be in this show. I'm not going to be put in a box as this, this character here. It was really freeing, but a lot of that credit goes to Jackie and Jeff Schaefer, who allowed that to happen for all of the characters. And, you know, over the course of, um, God, did, was it eight seasons, seven seasons, eight? Yeah, it was a long time. A lot of seasons. Over the course of all the seasons, you know, our characters all sort of bled into our own personal lives. Um, and while I'm certainly not uh, Jenny MacArthur, <laughs> There's a lot of Katie in Jenny. So um, it was it was really, really fun. And again, just a reminder of of characters work when you can deeply connect to them. And if you can allow yourself, I I fully respect the Daniel Day Lewis's of the world. But for me, the more I can uh, pour myself into a character, that is how I'm going to connect with that character. Yeah, the, the Daniel Day-Lewis is uh, a little bit more of a deeper cut where it's like, I'm just going to yeah, be Lincoln for months. He pours the months. character into himself. <laughs> I pour myself into the character. Yeah, I think I think that's the the easier approach of the two, if I had to say. I think, I think. But hey, you know, that, I think that's why Daniel Day-Lewis... He is, he is, his career is in a very different place than mine, so perhaps he has... <laughs> He's I mean, it's worked out, but he's also kind of chilling right now. He's like, I'm kind of retired, you know, like it's been such a such a pouring into him that he kind of needs to take a breather for a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? Anyone who says they're kind of retired is, they're just tired. They're, they're still it's, in the game. Yeah, until you officially still, say you're out, then we're still going to think you're in. Yeah, as long as you're breathing, you're in. As long as you're breathing, I like that. So I like what you said also about just kind of doing things your way and not conforming. And I, I feel like your husband and his movies are kind of the same thing. So what's it been like to to see him grow his thing, especially with his brother and just the type of movies they make? It's been wild. So I, you know, Mark and I get together and he was not a filmmaker, he was a musician. And I was an actor out here in LA. And I remember him saying to me in those very, very early days of like, I just don't understand why you don't like pick up the camera and go make something with your friends. And I was like, no, oh, that's cute. That's not how it works. Like, that's not how Hollywood works. You have to get permission. Mm -hmm. And you need to get Greenland, you need to get financing, you need to this. And he's like, no, you don't. I was like, well, if you want anyone to see your movie. Um, so <laughs> it worked out well for them. Apparently you can do that. Apparently you can pick up a camera and go make something with your friends. And you should, because that is how you learn and grow and become a fantastic filmmaker. Um, and that's what they did. Uh, honestly, the puffy chair was... And the shorts that came before that was just Mark and Jay picking up a camera and sometimes I got to play with them and that was amazing. Um, and then they just sort of refined their craft and really found their voice and found the way that they love to work. And um, and it's been interesting, particularly now with, with COVID and the new COVID restrictions and the way people are supposed to work, you know, the um, crews have been pared down and only so many people are allowed on set. And I was like, Oh, this is how we always work. <laughs> this is how we always work. Like, it's actually not no, a big difference. There's right? no village. There is no like thousand set dressers and production designers and builders. And like, that's just never been the way that the Duplasses make movies. And so um, it is interesting to see uh, people realize that their way of working actually is incredibly efficient. Um, but it's been so fun to watch them grow and, and super inspiring to me too of like, oh, right, no, you're totally right. You don't actually need to constantly ask permission, which is what we're sort of, you know, drilled into our brains very early in LA is to like, just wait for someone to say yes and yeah, validate. You, you learn things and then you have to unlearn things, whether it's life or career, and then you act on that after the fact. Yeah. As opposed to asking exactly. permission. It's like, oh, I could just do this. Cool. Let's, let's just figure do out it. Yeah. Let's do it. And by the way, it might not work, but right. it might. Yeah, totally. Listen, you're going to fail. And that's the best thing that you can do. You can learn from that stuff and then figure out what to do next. Well, that's the beauty. Yeah, of just don't yeah. spend a ton of money failing. Is right. like the only yeah. If caveat. you can do it a little bit more bare bones, I think that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like, please, please, please just don't ask your parents for so much money. No, not, not a good approach. <laughs> So I am on the East Coast right now. It's snowing. You grew up in Maine. Spent I'm so sorry. Where on the East Coast are you? I'm in Jersey right now. So 
there was already a ton of snow on the ground. We're getting probably four to eight inches. You, you dealt with the whole Northeast thing. Can I get some memories of, of growing up in Maine and what that was like for you? Yeah, I mean, I remember we would get these insane because I was right on the ocean, like way down east. So like past Bar Harbor. So what would happen is that it stays relatively mild on the coast. So we would get this snow and then it would turn to rain. So we would get like snow and then ice, like this much ice over. And it would turn into like this in beautiful, beautiful, like crystalline wonderland that was, it would shimmer and it was gorgeous, but it would also tear down every power line. And we were, we were without power for weeks. It was wild, but we were, you know, that's all we knew. So it's like, we had a wood stove. We would sometimes cook on the wood stove. It was like, that was, that was life. Yeah, you just figure but out like, how to do I'm, it. I sound like I sound like one of those ladies from like olden days where I tell the kids of like, I had to walk to the end of the dirt road to go wait for the bus. And sometimes if it was snowy, the bus would be an hour and a half late and I just have to stand there. Yeah, I'm it's sure true. I'm sure when you tell your kids those stories, they're like, What? What are you talking about, Mom? Yeah, they're like, wait, you just do a carpal drop off for us. There <laughs> was a bus. Freeze, Mom, like what? Come on exactly oh yeah yeah so Katie, and i only had three channels on my television oh, we didn't cable wasn't even available to us until like after i went to college right now we have every streaming service in the world now i mean it's crazy exactly so when you think about your career like we talked about all these great things what are some other things that still pique your interest whether it's from an acting perspective or a directing perspective i have had this incredible opportunity um, by chance to work with some of my most in favorite incredible icons from Glenn Close to Diane Keaton. Um, and like the list is insane. And I just sort of want to keep building that list. Like there's a lot of incredible younger actors too, but they're going to be around for a while. Like they're going to be here. I, yeah, exactly. They're gonna, and we've got time with them. I am just enamored and could sit and listen to these stories from these women and men for hours on end. And I want to like get in time with them and learn from them and absorb from them and watch, watch them do what they do so incredibly. Um, so I'd like to continue doing that. And I think I will. Um, I'd love to do another series on television that just like is fun. Like a, it's so weird that like a, a TV series feels kind of like a desk job because you just, it's regular and you go every day and you know what's gonna happen. Um, and it's been a while since I've done something like that. So I would love to sort of get back into that and get that sort of familial feel that like we had on the league. And it was so wonderful. I really miss that. Um, movies are great, but they're just quick. It's like summer camp after summer camp after summer camp. Um, so I'd like to do that again. I'm going to direct again. Good. That's really exciting. That's going to happen this spring, I think. Oh, wow, nice. I know. Um, and then I'm just going to keep on taking it as it comes. There's, you know, as much as I say, like, you go make your own stuff, so much of what we do is out of our control. So a lot of it is just being open to what comes at you. You no, know, you just have to be ready. And it would yeah. be nice to just have that everyday thing where it's like, all right, I'm gonna work with the same people. It's not like 13 days, shoot this movie in this random location. It's like, I'm going to the exactly. same place. I know my hours, I know what I'm getting into. Yeah, yeah, that would be sort of nice after so much unknown, <laughs> like a, yes. a year of complete, like massive question marks. So it'd be really nice to kind of know. It's also like my personality. I like to know what's going on, but um, that's very rare doing yeah. what we do no question well katie really nice to meet you appreciate you hanging out thanks so much and uh enjoy all those survivor episodes right 